right. Uh, well, Matt, uh, and hello, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Joe Kosu Um I'm very uh, grateful and thank you uh, to be here tonight uh, for the opportunity to uh, share uh, what I have learned and share what you're going to talk. It was last minute thing, but I, I thought, well, you know, um, I can see my own experience uh, with my uh, life with the gamelan and uh, things just pop up in my mind uh, since um, mostly um, I work independently here in Minnesota um, teaching the gamelan and create a program from uh, reaching out elementary school to um, high school college community and so on so I thought um, I'm just going to share what I have gone through from the last uh, of 30 years of my life with Gamelan. <laughs> and again, it's an opportunity, uh, awesome opportunity. And thank you, Matt, for inviting me, inviting me um, to do this uh, sharing. So um, I would like to... Uh, start a little bit about myself again and uh, I was born in a village of Java with no electricity and then um, I continued to learn Gamelan from my father and through high school and then um, my parents wanted to be a teacher at that time but elementary school teacher However, I keep going, uh, study to uh, ASCII at the time. Now it's easy. And I was graduated in 1986 as um, when I'm graduate, they sent me to New Zealand for eight years. And then 1995, I moved to uh, Minnesota. Um, I was planned to he stay here for four years, but have you go 25 years later, I'm still in Minnesota. So, and uh, what I'm going to share today basically is kind of the basic stuff that uh, everybody has gone through. And I just going to share what I have. And then hopefully um, some of you will help me to develop this um, way of teaching Gamelan. And this is um, suitable mostly for introductory or introduction level. level. So um, I'm going to share basically that there are um, six steps of learning Gamelan. This is beyond the introduction what this Gamelan is, but this is a straight way how um, uh, when after we done with the introduction about Gamelan and then the people uh, the student will sit down on the Gamelan and then uh, what bit should we do from there. Okay, and then and all for 30 years I uh, kind of collecting the step and then I'm going to share with you the first one basically is the think. And second is say, the third is do, the fourth is habit and character, and the sixth is destiny. I can do elaborate on that step. Um, as the students sit down after introduction to Gamelan, we are going to ask them to think about what they do, what, you, what they're going to do, which is obviously play Gamelan. And then usually I introduce one of the structure Depending on the level, sometimes I use a lateral structure, sometimes I use a lantern structure, and um, or katawang structure. They are all easy. They are access because they are a kind of short uh, piece. Say, I'll take the lantern structure, and then I uh, usually I wrote a chart of the uh, 16 bit one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four, and then I put a label two on the first and third beat, and then the nong, for nong on the fourth beat, and then compole 
on the second bit, except the first one, or sometimes even on the first score throw, I use a pole, depending on, depending on the level. So, and then I put the gong and the very uh, last one. And then um, I just conduct them to say the structure of lancharan. I say, this is what I say, one, two, three, they go. On the go, I, I'm going to ask them to say the gong. So uh, even the, the gong is nong, the gong and kanong symbol is together, but I just uh, ask them to say the gong. So, and then I say it's one, two, three, they gong, two, two, nong, two, pull, two, nong, two, pull, two, nong, two, pull, two, gong. If this is the lancharan, if the kata, elaterang, uh, you just say one, three, they gong, piang, two, piang, uh, piang, two, piang, nong, piang, two, and so on and so on. All of you know about that, okay? Now, that is uh, required a little bit of thinking. They, they have to think about, okay, there's 16 bit, the kanong is on the fourth bit, and so on and so on and so on, all right? So they see clearly the concept of uh, lantern structure. Then um, after that, I um, basically the student is not touching the instrument yet. Sometimes I ask them to play whatever for the 16 uh, second, uh, to make whatever the sound, you know, um, uh, but you know, you didn't have to do that. And then uh, I don't do that because sometimes, especially for um, first, second, third grade, because I just ask them to sit down and then um, say the structure. Even the college, I do the same thing. Even for adult, I do the same thing, meaning that they have to say the structure very well. So this is the second step. So the first step is think, and then second step is say it, and say the Lanzaran structure. And I thought this is really be suitable for us because gamelan music is oral traditions. So usually I, uh, to make sure that they uh, understand the importance of oral traditions, I uh, play the kandang, and then I, I, ask, I ask them to copy the sound, for example, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then copy, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then I say, uh, you know, cancer, I ask them to say that, and, and they are, oh, they cannot, right? So, and then I, I say and play of my kendang, as I say, I play together with the kendang, play and say together. That way, is actually reinforce student, wow, this is so important to be able to say it. And I think it's quite common now, the music teacher um, say, if you can say it, you can play it. So that is so important. And I uh, use this way uh, to sometimes to introduce the chenko, to introduce the, any pattern you like, because basically if you can say it, you can play it. And I also um, <laughs> remember when I was a kid, uh, my father is drama. And sometimes I go to the uh, paddy field with him. I saw him, his hand moving, you know, uh, uh, the drum motion, but he said some kendang pattern. Uh, as I walk behind him, I, what is he doing? What is he doing? You know, as, as a kid, I was curious, what is he doing? What is he doing? And then later on, I found, ah, he is just uh, chanting the kendang pattern that he learned or what like with that. So that's actually uh, what uh, you know, experience for me when I saw my um, father like that. Again, um, back to the uh, second step. Usually I ask them to say it over and over um, until everybody know the, 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 the structure very well. And then uh, sometime uh, I test them by, okay, everybody close your eyes. And now at this time, I would like you to say the, lunch, the, the structure and all of you must clap together on the gong. So everybody close their eyes. I say even you got 30 students, or it doesn't matter how many of them. Okay, close their eyes and say to pull uh, in something in this case, Lansaran, for example, they close their eyes and they must clap together on the gong. 
with the uh, with their eyes closed. So that means they they got deeper understanding about the the oral traditions. And then after that, okay, um, depending on the level, college student will be quick. You know, elementary school will take longer, but the same thing. So after they um, we get, I start with very simple. Okay, now. Um, I saw them how to hold the mallet and for every single, this is the way you hold the mallet. Now you need to strike right the middle of the knob or the pot and depending on the piece, let's say, and, the, and now tell them where the number is, you know, usually I don't write the number on the instrument, just tell them Saronis or Giro Lumo, Giro Lupatmonum, if, uh, P, if you could use the payload. So um, this kind of thing, I just have a, a, a chart on the board. Then, okay, now, I pick up your mallet and then I'd like to see, I would like you to see the Lanzaran structure and all of you play a row or two on the gong. So, okay, gong to, so they will be played twice in the beginning. One, two, ready, gong, two, two, no, two, pull, two, no, two, pull, two, no, two, two, gong. They're just two beats. If they can put together, okay, without conducting, that's, that's a good start. And then you can add, all right, now, uh, you, uh, if you do the canon, I would like you to play certain number. Uh, you say I pick up easy, uh, not in the, uh, depending on the level, but let's say you play um, six, six, six on the first three nong, and then you play two on the gong. So they don't have to worry about the number. Okay, I just play the number six every time you say nong, and I play number, F, play number two every time you say gong, right? So the canon. Do that way, and then you can add compole, and then after that you can add even the melody. I'm going to ask them to start with the gong and nong. For example, okay, melody, uh, all the sarons people pick up your mallet, and you're going to play number two every time you say gong, play number uh, six every time you nong. So everybody say it. In this in this case, they're not damping it yet. All right, they go one, two, three, three, gong. So. Everybody play except the Bonang Barong and Bonang Bonus player. All right. And then you, uh, you can ask now, I would like you, uh, the Kato, to join us to play on the first end of the beat. And now let's, uh, the combo join us. Every time you say Paul, you need to play number three. There we go. Now you can see uh, the combo and the Kanong part play together. Now you can see the melody, for example, in this, in this case, two, three, six, three, six, three, six, three, two, right? If you using the English way, but you, uh, and then, all right. Now, if you are the melody, I would like every time you say Paul, including the silent Paul on the first measure, I would like you to play number three. There you go. All right, so all the melody, play that way. Even the Saran Bernaros, I just start with the single, not double yet. Okay, because it's just making sure. And then in this case, you can have everything except the Bonang Barong and Bonang Bonaros. All right, so the melody will be two, three, six, three, six, three, six, three, two. The compo play their part, the kanang play their part. So they didn't, don't look at anything yet, but they can uh, play kind of nice music, right? And then after that, you can, I introduce the um, Bonang Barong part, okay? Bonang Barong, you need to follow the nong. A number, but you have to play every time you say two. In this case, when they will you get three, six, you're going to play number six, and every time you say two, you play number, uh, every time you say two, you play, play uh, six. In this case, we play six, a six, a six, a six, a six, a six, a two, a two, yeah. See, they, every time they follow the nong, right? You have the bonang barong part now, and then I introduced the bonang panaros, usually, uh, for introductions, usually one of the most challenging. So I asked them to clap, to clap, uh, oh no, no. Before clap, I asked them to say the end between the first and second beat. So gong to end, to nong to end, pull to nong to end, pull to nong to end, pull to gong. After that, I'm going to ask them to clap on the uh, end and the second to and nong. Gong to end pull to nong to end pull to nong to end pull to nong to end pull to gong. Everybody must clap this one. And usually there are some of the challenge, but you officially you can find somebody that you, um, you know, can pick up quickly. So, and then you can to follow the same number, which is nong number, and you play on your rhythm. See? Now, and that is part of the uh, second step 
and then you start with the uh, think and then say and then do it already. So they do it already, right? So now let's everybody play their own part. If you have the drum, you can ask to start with the drum to play and uh, on the pole. Uh, if you have kandangkale, okay, drama. Yeah, I would like you to play every time you say Paul, the big drum only. So you can have a big uh, a drum uh, on the compo. So now almost everybody play, right? And uh, and if after that you can, okay, a drummer, uh, now the rest of the beat you play on the small drum. So we're going do, 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 da, do, 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 da, do, 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 da, do, do. So you have everybody play together in a very short time all right now in order to get it they i would like to okay now let's re repeat that circle over and over until you uh, not think about it until you can hear other part so now everybody play their own part all right so that is end up to the uh uh, do and then four. When you repeat it over and over, that's become habit because that's what life is all about. We, you know, we do everything. Uh, the the life is the result of the uh, habit. Habit is something that we do it over and over until you're not thinking. And then after that, you can add another line if you want to, like. Uh, you know, uh, depend on the piece and this kid, no, 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 you can easy it, no, 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 it's get more complicated, for example. In this case, you can see that it's introducing the Lanzaran uh, Kota. And then, um, you said, oh, I'm, I'm skip that, skip something. Before I move the line, after everybody can play the first line, three, six, three, six, three, six, three, two, and then I introduce the uh, technique, in this case, the pitot. Uh, or damping. So when I, this is how I introduced the uh, damping. I can do pick up smell at first, right? So uh, I, I sometimes I hear some uh, uh, teachers, man, I cannot introduce the damping for many uh, uh, months or years sometime. And then I say, well, I can introduce the damping in two minutes. Uh, you know, how? So this is how you do. Uh, I pick up my lead, and then I ask them to cross like this, and then they can ask the say to pull no, gong to pull to nong to pull to nong to pull to nong to pull to gong. That's all way. When they play their part, they have to do both say and play. Now you see that. You see that. Now uh, I do this all for an hour until you nothing, and sometimes I ask them to close their eyes. Okay, gong do pull to nong do pull to nong do pull. Make sure the bounce is bouncing, and then now they do it. Back. This for the balungan, and then for the kanong, depending, you know, you and so on and so on. But usually it doesn't take long. In two minutes or three minutes, you'll be able to um, have that um, uh, method done. Some of them are, take some time for students, but more if you're introducing the grown up, usually, yeah, there's some challenge still because, you know, but still. In, 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 in with this way, uh, I when I discovered this way, wow, it's so uh, great to be able to introduce the damping such uh, a short time. And then uh, you can add line by line, uh, okay, depending how uh, how many um, kanong, how many um, line of the gong, and then uh, the last one will be uh, a character, meaning okay. In the character, you can introduce. Sometimes you can uh, show the elaborate instrument, or you can. For me, I think my favorite is I'm going to join the play the drum with them, so they know their part very well, and then they uh, uh, now can listen. So I'm going to, uh, without telling anything, I just play drum with them, and and I saw that you just need to listen and follow the drum and. Most of the time, I succeed that they can follow the drum. I can speed up and, and slow down in such a way. So uh, basically, when we learn uh, step by step, uh, as I tell you, um, using the six step, think, say, do, habit, character, um, 
if I introduce four colleagues in, in, in the semester, I ask them, after that, I can do, ask them to switch the instrument. And if you don't have the time, uh, for example, for uh, if you only have 90 minutes of workshop and you want to uh, feel accomplished, usually we don't, you know, because only 90 minutes. And at the end of 90 minutes, uh, I would like to, um, the students or people experience to play uh, a piece, real piece. Anyway, um, this work uh, this is work well. Um, if you have you know uh, like semester or half semester, um, when they when they can play their part by heart without looking looking at the notation, it help them easier um, to um, again to follow the condang. And I would like to share uh, an example of video. Uh, that I teach in a college level. I teach the uh, transition uh, from Irama uh, Lantar to Romotangung in less than two hours. Um, and then um, outside, I guide individually to uh, what people who can do interlocking and Bonang Barang, Bonang Panaros, and Saran Barang interlocking. So in this video, I would like you to see, uh, you know, number one, <laughs> they play from the heart because they don't have notations. Because I challenge them, as I do, and then um, I would like you to observe the transitions from uh, Iramau, and I don't tell them how many times we're going to switch back and forward. Okay, so uh, we can go back from Iramau Tanggung to Lanjar and from Syrup. I do not know. You have to listen the drum, and this uh, student actually only had only only have half semester for the Gamelan and the second half is they're using, they, they learn African uh, drumming. So, and then at the, at the end of the semester, uh, at the end of the uh, se section of the Gamelan portion, I visit and introduce the um, Irama, uh, changing in Irama, and then some Imbal and Skaran. So. <laughs>
you, everybody. Uh, you know, um, again, um, it was just a uh, short fun of visiting uh, this uh, school of young people learning government in short time. So I have been applying this uh, six step uh, for many years and during my stay in, in Minnesota. And now um, as a result, I have been, okay. Um, when I first came here to Minnesota, we only have one set of gamelan. But now in Minnesota, we have more than uh, 12 set of gamelan. And uh, there's two school district that have their own gamelan, and there's three, uh, four elementary school has their own gamelan, and uh, the two school districts uh, together, eighteen school altogether, and the teacher uh, uh, creating or developing the curriculum how to teach the gamelan based on the six step that I. Um, share with you. And sometime, um, of course, I'm very fortunate to um, have my wife uh, when I do school residency. Um, uh, sometime uh, I do the music part and then try to do the movement part, even in the uh, five session or two weeks session, or in, in this case, it will be 10, 10 session, including the performance ideal, uh, we are able to do the uh, Put together between the music and dance together. So, and that has been a uh, fun and fun journey from the last uh, 25 years here. Now, um, let's continue. Uh, how to connect this gamelan with our other area of life? <laughs> so, um, for, 20, or for, for or for 25 years, my life was gamelan, 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 focus on the gamelan, everyday life. So, uh, and that was end up being the main source of my income from the gamelan. And then basically uh, since 2000, 2002, uh, I was become independent here in Minnesota because I have a sumonar to support. But basically, uh, basically, if there's no gig like workshop or residency or performance, there's no money coming. So it's been very uh, interesting, right? Then uh, ten years ago, I begin. I start uh, get out from my comfort zone. Uh, in addition to do gamelan. I start my own business. And now uh, that business has a generated a good amount of uh, passive income. And uh, in short time, in short, <laughs> I'm going to share with you that uh, if my income was only from the gamelan or from the teaching and performing gamelan here in Minnesota, my family and I won't be here in Minnesota anymore, long time ago. So I'm very grateful that there, there's other income that can support uh, our family. And then, um, as you know, that even though Kamalan business uh, is always up and down, any other business is uh, up and down. So I learned great things that it is very important to have multiple resources of income now, especially if you want to become freelance musicians. Uh, different if you uh, have become a professor like Mas Mitianto, uh, you know what I mean, uh, or Pak Sumarsam, whatever. If you have a, a, a teaching a job at the college or, or school, uh, Kamalan, you know, you will be okay. But if you want to become freelance musicians, man, I really suggest that, you know, we should prepare to have multiple resources of income. So um, through many uh, entrepreneurship uh, journey, I, I have, I'm joined class, attending class, workshop, reading book, mentor. Uh, I start to see the connection between the gamelan and other uh, 
area of life, in this case, like health or well or relationship. And, and one of them is that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, from the entrepreneurship, I learned that the, the step, the sixth step that I just shared you earlier on is also um, the same step that we should go through as doing other uh, business or, or, or do other area of life. So I'm going to share with you uh, some uh, slide here. Okay, so um, I'm going to do slide. So uh, I'm just going to skip this one. Uh, basically, um, the area of life I I use I like to use the word F, <laughs> which is fun, facility, faith, whatever it is, food, your fitness, your health, your family, your finance your uh, friends, whatever, you can add any, any other uh, uh, area of life, okay? And then uh, how to achieve it, and this is what I learned, they are introducing the same step, which is, like say on, on your left here, is the, uh, the, the area of life of, that you would like to, uh, uh, that, that you like to achieve like fitness, what is your you know, fitness look like? What do your family look like? What do your finances look like? Of course, you have to design your own, you know? Uh, everybody has their own, you know? <clears throat> but to achieve that is number one, we have to think because, okay, my fitness, I would like to have uh, 165 pound by certain shots, right? For example, uh, I would like to be able to push up uh, 30, uh, time in one set, whatever you, whatever you go. I would like to become financially independent, whatever you go. They all, everything in this world start with think. So that's what, what I learned, okay? Everything starts from the idea, okay? And then write it down if necessary, right? And then to write down the goal. This is very, very important because so many people out there, if sometimes, Hey, what do you want to do? What do you want? What do you? What do you goal? I don't know. I want to be rich. I want to be held, but it's not written exactly uh, as specific. So we need to write down specifically, and then also declare. It's important to be able to say what is your dream is. I want to become awesome teacher, for example, and so on and so on. Okay, visualize, imprint, feel him. There we go. And uh, that's basically require. Um, so after you, in the Kamalan, right? We think we say, and you all right. And of course, destiny, your goal is happen. So. This step can be used in any um, a goal in any area of our life, okay? Including the food they would like to eat, including the fun stuff they would like to do, and so on and so on and so on, okay? So that is basically, you know, um, again, I just share a little bit about the, the step that I learned from my, uh, uh, entrepreneurship or, or, or doing my own business, all right? Now, I'm going to get number three now. All right, my, my page, my, my cheat sheet over here, I'm sorry. So, when I discover, oh my goodness, when I get out from my comfort of zone, comfort zone, doing instead of doing gamelan, 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 and then I do um, entrepreneur uh, or, or have my own business, and then people tell me how to achieve the goal, and then I said, "My goodness, that's actually what I did 
of what I have done when I teach Kamalan for many, many years. So that's, that's an opening eye for me, right? So that's why as a result of my teaching um, now, as a result, my teaching of Gamelan is uh, uh, more connected to real life beyond uh, Gamelan music. Uh, I, I can tell that my teaching is more meaningful and more importantly, I get more excited when I teach because I will be able to, you know, um, this is this is the real important, really important skill for everyone to to have, or at least to be aware how to achieve a goal. All right, and and then um, from then I going to offer you some uh, little bit conclusion or what what my observe or, or some questions. And, and I would like to uh, get uh, your opinion. So again, if, if you choose to become a freelance gamelan musician, it is very important to have a backup of, uh, or uh, income, or we need multiple income uh, source, unless you become the top 10, like Mas Porpo, Pak Mantap, uh, but I know they will be able to support their life from the uh, professional artists. But un unless we are on the top 10 uh, and you are on your own, I do really encourage everybody to have a um, big up uh, income. Okay. Um, now, this is uh, if my question sometimes is uh, uh, or, or something come out, sometime came up in my mind. If we experience how to become a successful gamelan musician, if we have gone through the sixth step in the gamelan, we should be able, or we should be brave enough to work or and achieve other area of our life. Uh, again, uh, follow the same process in the finance or health or faith or relationship. And the question is, <laughs> how come? We see many people with great gamelan music, music, especially in Indonesia. I saw many, many, many. I knew, I know many, many gamelan, uh, awesome gamelan musicians, but uh, and they have a, a, a awesome skill, but still struggle in the area of life, especially the financial. That's my my question. And I still remember when I was young. Maybe this is why uh, sometimes it stop us to become uh, financially independent. <laughs> because I uh, often hear when I was a kid, uh, even when I was a teenager, um, I still remember when I was um, then, uh, Joko, if you're going to a school or college and study gamelan, how are you going to make a living? Sometime until now, still happened this question, right? Right. Um, on the other hand, um, at some point I um, chat or, or talking with Judy Diamond a long time ago when we visited Minnesota, and one of the in one of the conversations she said that um, the reason she learned gamelan is because she wanted to become a better person. When I hear that, well. That's kind of cool. So how is that, you know? So, I mean, better person in this case, hopefully will cover many, um, uh, uh, many other area, you know, better in many area of our life too. So um, knowing that there's a similar step to achieve success in the Gamelan and in other area of life, I hope more and more people will be aware of this powerful process and apply in the real life. Now, sometime, and this is uh, my big question for Mas Hartono, as is there, Mas uh, Sutrasen Hartono, or either uh, Gamelan uh, teacher or even Javanese people, um, over, uh, often hear this. Um, our tradition Gamelan is Adiluhung or Adiluhur, uh, you know, uh, or noble. 
And then sometimes I say, I still don't understand when then when the when people say uh, our traditional gamelan is adiluhum. And now I can say, well, might be that this six six step um, that we just gone through is or are one of the uh, are the reasons. Um, why our gamelan is Adiluhum, maybe. As closing, I would like to invite you uh, to see uh, high school, just learn gamelan for um, 50, 50 minutes, uh, five sessions of 50 minutes. So um, this again, uh, just uh, a for closing, and then after this, we can uh, uh, open a question and answer. So, uh, can I share this uh, screen, Matt? Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. Did you click the share sound button? Share computer sound also. Oh. Uh, did I not? I Not think sure. I did though. Okay. Uh, yes, screen. I think I think it's I did. Yes. Okay. Let me. Uh, oh, oh. Have a beautiful time experiencing it, like we have a beautiful time playing it.
Okay, that was uh, uh, my sharing of experience working with high schooler for a short amount of time. So, um, sorry if my talking was kind of uh, mumbling around and hopefully you can get some insight. And now um, I'd like to uh, you know, open if there's any uh, discussion or question. Thank you, Joko, for your presentation that you put together in like three days. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so if anybody has any questions, if you'd like to put your name in the chat box here on this side, um, and then I'll call on you. I guess I'll ask the first question. Okay. So my question is about your experience taking your gamelan lessons to life lessons. So how long did it take you to feel comfortable going outside of your comfort zone and learning these new skills? Oh my God. Oh, uh, it is long, actually 10 years, right? So the first, it was 2010 exactly, uh, when the um, house bubbling down, when, when, when the economy is collapsed, right? Man, all the businesses down. And I, I start uh, learning, uh, basically I read a lot of books about entrepreneur and then uh, take the uh, class and then they uh, they introduced me the first one I think is the book of think and grow rich and the beginning and you know think and grow rich and they introduced another book another book another book. and then when I, as I uh, grow I'm, I'm, I'm not just discovering uh, they asked me to visualize the the dream. They asked me to say it, to declare. They 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 told me watch out every word that you say because every word you, you say is so important. If you say you're sick, you'll be sick. If you say you're awesome, you'll be awesome. And this kind of stuff is stick so many things. And then I think it's at one point and they um, the sixth step was basic on Mahatma Gandhi teaching. You know, if you know Mahatma Gandhi, so he's the great, uh, you know, entrepreneur. So, and then summary, man, now I brief enough to say it to students at some point, to college students, I say, you guys, even though you learn gamelan, you will learn many other things. And if you apply in your real life, you'll be able to succeed in any area of your life. Now, <clears throat> sometimes I, I would like to say, to, let's say I take the 90 minute workshop, right? <clears throat> 90 minute workshop, the people who not, know nothing about Gamelan. And at the end of 90 minutes, I, they will be able to play a piece together. Uh, I often use Lanzaran Sayo, which is many of you know. Uh, you know, in 90 minutes, they, they will be able to uh, play Sayo. And then I even July like brief enough to say that <clears throat> Look, I would like you to imagine that Lanzaran Sayo is a million dollars, or Lanzaran Sayo is your fit body, or Lanzaran Sayo is your beautiful home. The way you're going to achieve is exactly like what we went through. Today, just 90 minutes, you think, you say it, and I ask them, <clears throat> how many times I ask you to say to Bodunong? In 90 minutes, I ask them, they will say, 100. Thousand like that. And how many times we play the, the first line? Ne no, ne no, ne no. I mean, oh, I, it's, 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 you know, a lot. See, exactly. That's what you do. And then, and, and then many music educators now, they, 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 this is why one of the reasons uh, Bloomington District and other district are the teachers are willing to adapt this, uh, this paid uh, attitude. Uh, uh, teaching way, the, using the six step to introduce the music to them. So it, in other words, it take a long time, Matt. It was a freaking out because I, okay, I, I was getting out from my comfort zone. Even sometimes my family, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing of your Joko? You know, I mean, uh, it was, it was challenging, you know, it was challenging. Okay, so long Thank time. You. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a question here from Zoe. Zoe, do you want to jump in and ask a question here? 
Okay, uh, interesting which dance you wife teach when doing a short session like you described. Um, many of them are, we, uh, my wife uh, choreograph their own. Uh, we can share with you in the video. Uh, we uh, uh, like, uh, we have, a piece that accompanied by Lancharan Sayo, which is called Sa uh, Ratnasari. And then I a piece, a, a, a composed piece like, no, 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 and then we do it. Sometime I use a pop music uh, like Wong Dunya, to accompany the salmon dance. So we have to be flexible and yes, if we're interested to do more, we will we will be more than happy to share with you some video and some name of the pieces that we we do, including the uh, the notation of the gamelan. And also yeah. we have some videos, yes. Yeah. yeah, if you're interested in sharing videos, I'd love to see them and okay. see more of what you're doing. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I can I can I can share with Matt in one of the linking. If you go to Sumonar website, there's also, you know, but there's kind of explanations of, of what of what our mission is. Uh, but combined with the you know the, the step of the Kamalan and and dance. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We have a question from uh Mas Mike in Chicago. Mike, would you like to jump Hello, in? Hello, Mike. <laughs> okay. Joko, how are you? Awesome, Mas Mike. Awesome to have you. <laughs> uh, great to see you. And and uh, shout out to uh, Park Sumarsam and Park Arjito. It's been too long since I've seen you guys. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And I was also at that on 2007, which was a fantastic event. Um, <laughs> One question, of the six uh, steps you mentioned, which one do you think is the most important? Or is there one that's more important than others? Man, uh, there's, uh, I think the six step is depend on the, uh, on the uh, uh, level of uh, learning. But I should say that the uh, oral traditions is the, the second step, saying is the one of the most important. Uh, because think, you know, you can, you can see the number, you can, you know, but memorizing uh, the, the structure. But I think the, the very, uh, they're all important. And usually we can, I don't skip uh, one, you know, usually I do in order. Yeah, I did order that. Make sure that you see clearly what is Lantaran structure, what the first going to do, no, do, or, 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 structure. You see clearly where the Kato is, where the Kakanong is, where the Kampol is, where the Gong is, because that will, uh, even for advanced, advanced learning, even for advanced study, if you know where the Kanong is, you know, uh, you will be able to uh, get back. I have a student who learn Kendang Ciblon. Right, you can dance on a ladrang, which is very uh, challenging. And she always, I need the kanong, I need the kampul. You know, if this, you know, they they just uh, they just need because the the kandang is, is 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 a structure holder. So having other structure solid, it helps them, right? So that is basically, um, you know, is so so important because. Um, to be able to uh, to say it, because uh, I often um, uh, <laughs> I remember when I brought my group from New Zealand, but Mas Mike, we are invited to have a reception at the ambassador, New Zealand ambassador in Indonesia, but we don't have gamelan, right? We don't have gamelan, but we have to do something. We have to do something. So I asked, okay, guys, now I would like you to sing your own part on this piece. So we are spontaneous, uh, create the jemblung. In Japanese, we have a jemblung, which is uh, you know oral gamelan. So uh, uh, everybody sing their own part. It was cool. It was spontaneous, but it's work. You know what I mean? So be able to say their own part. You can carry it. You can sing it. You can play it. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> any other? Uh, any more questions for uh, Joko? Any last? I have one. Oh, who is that? Lois. Lois. Yes, please. Uh, Mastrisno, were you the leader of the Schubert Gamelan when they played in the fishing houses on the frozen lake in the St. Paul area? Uh, and well, that was on YouTube. I, I think there are, there's another, uh, I'm not aware, there's another group called the, um, what do you call it? They are contemporary Gamelan. So if they placed recently, uh, maybe it's not me. They, they have a group called it uh, Novel de Gamelan, International oh. Novel de Gamelan. Mm -hmm. Because that's on YouTube and there they are, you know, in the middle of winter and the lake is frozen and okay. they're playing Gamelan in the fishing houses. <laughs> Very <laughs> interesting. It's, it's so, uh, so crazy, Minnesota, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we haven't done that one, my group, yeah. But uh, just to jump on, jump in on that, um, it's kind of incredible how much activity you have to do up there actually in, in Minneapolis and St. Paul area. I remember one time I was stuck in Minneapolis because my train was broken that I was, I was taking a train to Seattle from Chicago and I was stuck there. So I stayed with you for a few days and in, in like three or four days you had like four or five different school presentations, two different performances. It was so much activity. It was like, wow, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a, you've made a lot of different opportunities for yourself to perform and to educate people. And can you talk about why do you think um, you've had success in Minneapolis, maybe uh, getting people to understand what, what you're doing? Okay. I think the key is here. For me, my concept is, the first like interview, the first 30 second impression is very important. So that, the way I translate this, the first time you introduce Gamelan, if students having fun, they will learn more. But if we introduce the first time, oh man, this is boring, this is, you know. So I'm always I, I, I do my best to create, to make sure that the first imp imp impression is, having fun and challenging at the same time. And that's the result. Every reflection we have from uh, uh, elementary school to high school to college, the, the, the result of reflection is it was fun, but it's still challenging. So, and because if they're fun, if they're having fun and enjoy, uh, two things might happen. At, le at, least, at least two things uh, going to happen. Number one, they're going to have the best experience in their life that will never forget. Wow, that was an awesome uh, experience, number one. Um, I give you an example. Uh, I We have been to Clearview Elementary School from the last 20 years. Every uh, student who graduated from Clearview, when they graduate high school, they invite back to the school, right? for kind of a breakfast together. And then ask, they will ask, during you stay for six years at elementary school, what is the most thing that you remember? You know, 65% they say gamelan and uh, dance, 65%. That's the principle of saying. So now it's become uh, the, uh, you call it the, the tradition of the school, every fourth, fifth grade, they, they have gamelan as they call uh, 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 final year. And that's the first one. Second, uh, if they have um, fun and challenging, they will um, learn more about gamelan, whether, you know, with different teachers or different places. And that's, that's our goal. So, yeah. Uh, it's, to me, it's very, very important to give um, uh, the best impressions when you start. I give you another example. <laughs> Usually, I start getting another example. Um, the, I offer free gamelan workshop. I uh, that was my my own kid at when she was second grade, right? Second grade. I I come to school and then um, if you. Um, I will be happy to 
give your um, students gamelan workshop just short, for a short amount of time. And then the PTA volunteer, and then they came to my studio. And then in one hour, they'd be able to pray to preach together. And from that on, believe it or not, it's generated my school residency more than 10 years. Just from the very short introductions, it's generated uh, you know, a residency for many, many years until my kid was graduate. So that's just kind of uh, the way I do, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You have a lot of good positive energy right when people meet you. And <laughs> Thank <great>. you. <laughs> so we have uh, uh, Masa Tris would like to uh, jump on. Thank you very much. Good evening. And first of all, I would like to congratulate to Mas Joko as we are sharing the name, sharing expertise, and sharing experience here. I, I appreciate it very much. As on your presentations earlier, you mentioned my name as well. I feel like uh, you are sending the energy to me that's come up right away in my head. So again, thank you very much. You are the real real teacher, real musicians that you jump up into the oceans or deeper jungle. <laughs> That's what I did in the past and still I am. Uh, on your earlier presentations, you said uh, you would like to share or to learn or to know what is Adiluhung. Uh, if I remember to what uh, the lead of Umar Kayam, a philosophic points that he shares. When I met him, I discussed a lot related to these things also. Uh, it's hard to translate literally. And also because Adi Luhung etymologically come from two words. Adi mean beautiful, Luhung means uh, highly respected. At least that subject is well recognized by the certain areas, uh, well known by the people who loved or developed that traditions. In this regards, of course, that's also Adi Luhung, if we combine it into two concepts in this regard uh, related to historical, philosophical, and also musical, perhaps uh, we will learn exactly toward how former people, at least the Javanese, consider that Adiluhung is applied strongly to the gamelan itself. Because according to uh, the lead of Umar Kayam, one of the professor at the Gajah Mada University who also uh, write the book uh, Wayang Without Border. He said that when we talk about Adiluhung here, at least we have to connect it to other areas where the subject related to, or if the subject contains of something, uh, we need to know inside exactly similar to what you said. When you don't know, it's actually to me, you are just uh, put yourself down humbly too much because you know almost everything about Gamelan historically and you learn a lot from what you did, meaning you are learning by doing as everyone, uh, most of Japanese did that too. But in terms of the terminology of Adi Luhung, and the experience and then the skill and techniques that you earn from that time. Also, you live in the Kamalan in foreign country and you successful that you are an expert of a philosophical concept in Adiluhung here. So historical, philosophical, musical, organizatorial of the Kamalan itself exactly as contains to uh, what you said on your presentation. Again, con congratulations, Mas Joko. <laughs> ma, ma, That's thank my you, favorite things. Ma, thank you. And uh, it reminds me, um, can I jump in a little bit? Please. 
Uh, uh, I remind me um, uh, sometime the concept of the Luhung we should carry on in our life. And I often give an example um, why in the Gong, okay, why the first Gotra of Katawang or Lancharan or Latirang, there's no Kampol, right? That's a question. So why? There's no compole. And then I often say, you know what? Because the gong is still ringing. The gong is considering one of the biggest culminations, the destination, the destination that we're going to. Everybody is going to gong. And you know what? When the gong is still ringing, you're not allowed to put the compole on the top of it on the top of it. So, and then what does it mean? And then I say, you know what? Many things that we can learn. It, it, for example, if you see your teacher, your parent still talking, you're not supposed to interrupt. You need to wait until what they talk is done and then you can start. So that's what you learn by learning Gamalan. This is why there is a no compole uh, okay, on the first quarter of the Lancharan, Latrang, and Katawang because the gong is still ringing. So, you know, this this small tiny thing, but we will we will be able to carry it on our daily life to be respectful, right? So that's just just a small thing that uh, I I remember and and to be honest I I carry it and I um, uh, share with my kid over here <laughs> even they are even though they are born in uh, both of them I mean one of them born in Indonesia but uh, moved to New Zealand very uh, young I share with them and they understand that right so yeah. So it's very important. Uh, I mean, when Jody mentioned, you know, one of the reasons I'm going to play Gamelan is to become a better person. Man, there's so many things that we can learn. You know, it's teamwork, it's listening to each other, it's balancing, it's so many things. But again, it's, it's, uh, it's so many things that, that when we can translate it to real life, Gamelan is very powerful, I should say. Thank you, Master Tono. <laughs> Pleasure, yeah, great, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Okay, um, so thank you, Vajoko. I don't see any other uh, questions coming in here unless somebody else wants to jump in uh, here at the end. Um, so I would like to just say thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, look forward to what, maybe you have um, some something to say about what your group is doing now. What is your uh, community ensemble uh, COVID situation? What are you doing there at the moment? Okay, first of all, I just got back uh, from Indonesia uh, for three months. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, I was tested, I did swap and then I, they, 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 they stated I was positive COVID. <laughs> 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 yeah. So and then, but but I don't believe that is uh, right because none of my people around me is uh, 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 would they get got it. So and then on the following day I get test again and then the result was negative. So it was kind of interesting. However, I have to be uh, two uh, to get two quarantine in Indonesia. The first time I arrive and then before I left <laughs> for thirty days all together. Anyway, um, because of that, uh, there's some few people that take a private lessons. We still, uh, you know, take private lessons, especially in the elaboration, like in their Kendang or Bab, something like that. Um, people still continue. <clears throat> Our next project will be the collaboration with uh, Somalian uh, musicians. Uh, with this, uh, we take the Islamic um, Islamic theme. Uh, he is a, a great musician from Somali and they live in here in Minnesota. And we are very grateful. Uh, we have received a grant uh, from uh, Metropolitan uh, Regional Art Council to do this project. And I hope we'll be able to do perform at least outdoor in, in the June. And that's uh, our biggest uh, big project. But uh, yeah, that's basically uh, our um, 
upcoming uh, performance. Hopefully, we'll be able to share with you guys when, when the project is done. Yeah, we're excited about this project. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, thank you, Joko. All right. Um, and I guess uh, we will now say goodnight to everybody. Thank you for coming to this lecture. And hopefully, everybody comes back next Sunday for the Community Gamelan Roundtable, where we will have a very fun discussion with a lot of different people. So see you then. Take care and have a good night. Thank you again. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.